I'm turning it over to you.
they map all of the behavior for us. Because otherwise, we're going to be looking at blog posts like this to try to pick all of this out ourselves. So this is a real blog post. It was from Talos. They had the bottom pyramid stuff. They had um, indicators. They had domain names. They had an IP address. We had the PowerShell. Um, they, there was a word, malicious word document. We had all of those hashes. They put it down. They make it nice and easy down at the very bottom of the article. They say, here are your IOPs. They had some host stuff in there. So they had uh, some registry keys. That would be very hard for those bad guys to change. So guess what? I threw that into my detection stuff. So I'm going to start looking for these registry keys. But then at the very top of that one, they had as a sentence that um, the document contains links to external files. That's actually the TPP that I needed to look for. And it was buried inside of that article. But if you go to the minor attack page, um, inside of their a description for DDE, it says, monitor for spawning <coughs> of unusual processes such as command.exe from Microsoft Office applications. That's the behavior. They mapped it. I don't have to try to keep up with the thousands of blog posts that are out there. If that behavior has been submitted to MITRE, I can start looking just at the MITRE website and start tracking their uh, behavior stuff. So how do we use it? So um, what I'm going to do is pull up, this is their online version. So they have a tool out there called, <laughs> so, um, the minor attack framework itself is just a web page. So, if I come here and say view this, this is what it looks like. It's just a website with um, tools and tactics and techniques. But they also have a tool called Navigator, where you can start mapping this in your own environment. So, when you pull it up first time, obviously it's light because you don't have anything that's going on. But let's say um, I'm interested in spear phishing, and I know that our company does really good. We have all the tools that we need to detect spear phishing. I can start color coding these to be green to say, yes, we have coverage on that. And then if you say, well, I'm not sure what this batch profile is. You can just right click and go here and read about it, your detection. Oh, well, yeah, we might be kind of weak on this one. So we can just color code this one to yellow. What if you want to do it by group? So instead of going through individual ones, let's say that I know that I am targeted by FIN7. I can search for FIN7. It pulls it up. I can select, and it will highlight it. I can select all of them. You'll see that that one is highlighted. I can also do um, APT32. Do what? APT32. APT32. Yeah, it's pulling up the. Oh, it might be the. 
the, the name of the actual author? Yeah. Um, I have done it by Finn 7 before, too, but now I'm not sure why it's not showing that up. Oh, I'm the one. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 So, Finn 7. Now. It's still low, so you might get an error message, but it's 
at that point, yes, I do have some concerns that they're updating it so often that once I build a map, um, how long is it going to be active for? But it is just a JSON file in the back end. Yeah. So I've, I've actually been playing around with doing some Python programming to try to automatically update it just I, through a Python script. I have something for you. Awesome. Let's talk. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. For a company just starting out, what's the best way to uh, verify that your tools that you have can detect something like so fast or easy? So our process for verifying this is one, trust the vendor, which obviously none of us trust the vendor, but we are looking through some of the vendor documentation and saying yes, they're, they're saying they, they, they will detect this piece of it. Our second step is um, we're just looking at, we, so we use Splunk. So we're doing our own Splunk query to say yes, um, we got logs from our security device that is in there. Our third step is do we have correlation rules and some notable events to do some automatic um, either remediation or alerting on those is our third step on that one. So for just starting out though, I would obviously read some of the vendor stuff, see what they, because, um, let me pull that one up real quick. They got, Miner is starting to do some work with vendors. Um, I'm trying to remember what they call this. Um, Caldera or attack evaluation. Eval, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Attack eval. So they are <laughs> looking at some companies out there already to do some evaluations. Um, you have to actually read down through there on, on what they say because um, there's some that says, well, they should detect it, but they actually didn't type stuff. So you don't just actually do your own research on that. This will give you a place to start. I, so I'm wearing the thing here. I do not work for Red Canary, but they have a project called Atomability, and it allows you to, to test. Um, it's both in PowerShell, Python, Ruby. I think they have different, different, um, yeah, roots and code for it. They make sure. Uh, but yeah, it, it'll actually run through all the techniques, and you can just run. Another them all tool and, yeah. is uh, Veridin, and yeah. they actually have a booth downstairs. Yeah. Um, Veridin's tool. Yeah. It, they. Um, I've heard good things about it. Purple Team, they, they automate some of your Purple Team exercises and they connect in to um, a lots of tools. We've got them tied in with our Splunk. And, um, so we're just using that to kick off the tax and make sure that everything gets blocked and detected and our rules work. And so it's, it's letting us automate our, some of our Purple Team exercises and let our red team, our true red team, focus on those things that can't be automated. What's your perspective on incorporating things that aren't included in the attack framework, like denial of service attacks, or you know things that are important to the business, but not, um, you can't call it better right now? Right, so yes, this is attack, very attack focused, but it will not cover everything. So yeah, we have other, process other documents that we're working on. Are you, are you like incorporating that into your project as well? Like are you considering that or are you just primarily focusing on the tax? It's not incorporated in my, my project, mm -hmm. but there are other projects and it is being considered for the overall security. Um, it's not like this is going to be our be all end all map oh, we covered everything on the attack, so we're good. Nobody's ever going to have that. We know that's not the case. Um, and we know that you know there's attack out there, there's TTPs out there that haven't been incorporated into this yet. So is this a replacement for our threat team? No. Is it a supplement to our threat team? Yes. And again, it's kind of, like I said, on the purple team, this allows us to automate some of that purple team stuff. This allows us to automate some of our threat management stuff. Because if we know about it, why don't we should just go do it and they can monitor for the stuff that 
isn't in here. It's that get rid of the low hanging fruit. Uh, the key ride really cool TTP to be there though for better? Um, we probably would. We haven't written any really cool ones, but um, Aflac is really good about sharing, so I don't see why we wouldn't. But that has not come up yet. That's a typical customer. Yeah. Do you have a chart for colorblind people? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 